part. I just want to do a little housekeeping. Uh, if you do have any questions throughout the presentation that you'd like to ask, there is a box in the bottom left-hand corner where you can submit those. And hopefully um, we'll have some time at the end where I can get all those answered for you. You'll have to pardon me today. I have a little uh, head cold, so um, hopefully I'll be able to make it through. So we will go ahead and get started. So thank you all for joining us again. Um, we are going to go through some of our Norwegian tours for 2017. And well, Joey uh, was going to take over this presentation for me since I'm a little under the weather, but um, we couldn't get his audio to working. So here I am. So that is definitely not me, but um, if you've attended a presentation with Brecky Tours before, you probably have seen my picture. My name is Amanda Hancock. So, um, so yeah. <laughs> In case you're new to Brecky Tours, I do want to give you a brief introduction into who we are. So we were founded in 1956 when Arne Brecky, was a student from Norway, worked his way through graduate school in America by conducting summer tours in Europe. We're a family-owned company located in Grand Forks, North Dakota, and we offer a wide variety of tours escorted tours that we create ourselves. And then we also offer independent travel packages, customized tours for individuals, families, and groups, as well as heritage travel and cruises. Our goal here at Brecky Tours is simply to strengthen the cultural and ethnic ties between North America and Scandinavia by creating meaningful travel experiences. So why do people want to visit Norway? Well, there are many reasons, but I've summed up a few here. First is its natural beauty and phenomena. So here you'll find glaciers, fjords, mountains, forests, the midnight sun, and the northern lights can all be found here in Norway. It also has a rich history filled with Vikings, kings and queens, wars, great wealth, hardships, and much more. And the culture of the Scandinavian countries are unique, yet at the same time they can be quite similar. And nature, family, education, and hard work are all valued by the folks living in Norway and in other parts of Scandinavia. Now, most Norwegians speak very good English, making it an easy place to get around on your own. Speaking of which, the public transportation in Norway is very good. They have buses, trains, and low-cost flights to choose from, so it's easy to get from point A to point B. And of course, the food. Fresh seafood, freshly baked bread, and fresh fruit are all commonly found in Norway. And finally, Norway is a relatively safe destination. In fact, you'll see many babies sleeping in their strollers outside of shops and restaurants. So who will you be traveling with while you're on a Brecky Escorted Tour? Well, you meet a variety of people, but in general, these folks are from the U.S. and Canada. They have ethnic ties to Norway and Scandinavia. They're retired, and they enjoy learning new things and seeking out new experiences. Some other interests commonly found include history, embroidery, folk music, dancing and singing, hiking, and other outdoor activities. Now that you know a little bit more about Brecky Tours and your fellow passengers, let's pack our virtual bags and we'll head to Norway. We'll start with our spectacular Norway tour. Now this is one of our most popular tours and it's a great introductory tour for first-time visitors. It's very similar to our Best of Norway tour, but instead of heading south to Stavanger, we'll travel north to Trondheim. On this 10-day tour, we'll visit Oslo, Wolf, Bergen, Loen, Molde, and Trondheim. On day one, you'll depart the U.S. on your international flight to Oslo, Norway. You'll arrive in Norway on day two, and your guide will meet you at the airport and escort you to the Grand Hotel. Now, the rest of your day is free to relax or explore Oslo on your own. On day three, we'll begin with a sightseeing tour of the Viking Ship Museum and Vigeland Sculpture Park. Vigeland Sculpture Park is one of the largest, is the world's largest sculpture park made by a single artist, and it really is a must-see while you're in Oslo. And the Viking Ship Museum is home to the world's best preserved Viking ships and finds from Viking tombs around the Oslo Fjord. In addition to three Viking ships, you'll also find a number of small boats, 
sledges, a beautiful cart, textiles, and household utensils. The tour continues with a visit to the Norwegian Folk Museum, which is one of the world's oldest and largest open-air museums. There are 155 traditional houses from all parts of Norway and a stave church from the year 1200. The museum also has an indoor exhibit with traditional handicraft items, folk costumes, Sami culture, weapons, toys, pharmaceutical history, and there's also changing exhibits. In the summer, the Open Air Museum offers freshly baked lefse, horse and carriage rides, feeding of animals, guided tours, handicraft demonstrations, and much more. Now, the rest of your day in Oslo is free, and during your free time, you may want to visit the Oslo Opera House, the National Museum of Art, the Oslo Parliament Building, the Oslo City Hall, which houses quite a number of uh, very beautiful artworks inside, or Akershus Castle. Dating from 1299, this medieval castle and royal residence developed into a fortress in 1592, after which it was rebuilt into a Renaissance castle in 1637. The castle includes several magnificent halls, the castle church, the royal mausoleum, models of the castle, the government's reception rooms, and banquet halls. The small historic church at Akersus Castle is home to the royal sarcophagi. You may also want to visit the nearby Resistance Museum, which documents Norway's domestic World War II history from the years 1940 to 1945. The exhibitions have recreated five years of occupation through pictures, documents, posters, objects, models, original copies of newspapers, and recordings. And I'm not really a big fan of World War II memorabilia, but my husband talked me into going, and it really is very fascinating inside the museum how, how everyone lived and how, how they, I guess, spread the message of hope even while being occupied. On day four, we'll drive across the Hardanger Vita, which is the largest high mountain plateau in Northern Europe. So it's very interesting to go from the forest that you'll find around Oslo um, to the Hardanger Vita, where it's very um, tundra-like, I guess is the word for it, um, just very sparse veg vegetation. In Eidfjord, we'll visit the Hardanger Fjord Nature Center. The main objective of the center is to gather and impart knowledge about the way different parts of nature interact and highlight the relations between nature and human endeavors. It's, it's creating a meeting point essentially between Norwegian nature and modern man. We'll continue on to Vos for dinner and overnight at the lovely Fleischer's Hotel. The hotel is, has an interesting past. It was built in 1889 in a popular Swiss style. But the hotel quickly became well-known amongst wealthy tourists, mostly because of its architectural style. During the Second World War, Fleischer's Hotel was occupied by the Germans, and the hotel was among the few buildings in Vos that was not destroyed by bombs. We'll depart Vos the morning of day five for a day's excursion into Norway's largest, uh, second largest city, Bergen. Here we will enjoy a sightseeing tour featuring a visit to Trollhagen and the Hanseatic Wharf, once the main hub of trade between Norway and the continent, going back nearly a thousand years. <coughs> You'll have some time to explore on your own before we return to Vols for dinner and overnight. On day six, we'll begin our journey north with a trip on the Flom Railway to Flom. The train journey runs through fantastic nature, past the Rallar Road, steep mountains, breathtaking waterfalls, through 20 tunnels, and offers so many viewpoints that many feel like traveling multiple times between the mountain and the fjord. In the span of a single hour, the train takes you from the mountaintop at Myrdal Station on the Hardanger Vita, 2,800 feet above the ocean, to sea level at the Sogner Fjord in Flom. From Flum, we'll drive through the world's second longest tunnel to Ireland. Now, during construction, one of the challenges faced by the engineers was how to keep drivers alert through a 20 minute long monotonous drive through this tunnel. So, to break up the mon monotony, at every six kilometers, there's a large cavern. And the cave are meant to be, um, to be a break in the routine, 
providing a refreshing view and allowing drivers to take a short rest. Special attention has been paid to the lighting, whereas white light is used in the tunnel itself, the mountain caves are equipped with blue and yellow light, which gives one the illusion of driving in the daylight every six kilometers, and the golden light along the floor gives the illusion of sunrise. It really is a really spectacular tunnel if you ever get a chance to drive through. From Ireland, we'll ferry across the Songnai Fjord and continue along the fjord to Fjordland. We'll visit the Norwegian Glacier Museum and get answers to the question like, why is glacier ice blue? Why is the fjord green? And how, are the, how were the fjords formed? You can either perform your own experiments with a thousand-year-old ice from a nearby glacier. After learning all about glaciers, we'll stop for a photo at the Boyum Glacier en route to Shai and Loen for an overnight at the Alexandra Hotel. We'll start the next day off with a cruise of the Geiringer Fjord, and hopefully it's magnificent and it's clear and it looks like this and not like this, which is how it looked the last time I cruised on the Geiringer Fjord. So it's a little hard to see the magnificence of it when it's very foggy and cloudy, but it's still quite, um, quite picturesque. After the cruise, we'll travel the famous Troll Path en route to Molda. And Molda is known as the City of Roses, a name which originated during Molda's era as a tourist destination of international fame in the late 19th century. Tonight, you'll stay at the style-shaped Scandic Salite Hotel with a panoramic views of water and mountains. And there is a bar up here at the very top where you can go and have a drink and just sit out and look out over the water. And it's really quite an amazing sight. Now, en route to Trondheim the next day, we'll drive the Atlantic Ocean Road. And this unique stretch of road takes you right out to the ocean's edge. In 2005, the road was voted Norway's engineering feat of the century, and it's also known to be the world's most beautiful drive. And once you've driven it, you will understand why it became the engineering feat of the century and why it is well so well known. We'll stop in Bude for a visit to Irgen Kisport, which is a bunker built by the Germans during World War II. We'll have lunch at a local restaurant, and if you go from comments from our past tour participants, it's the best seafood that you'll ever have. Now our tour concludes in Trondheim, which was the Viking capital until 1217. On your final day in Norway, we'll enjoy, enjoy a tour of Trondheim featuring the Nidaros Cathedral. The cathedral is built over the burial site of St. Olaf, the Norwegian Viking king who became a patron saint of Norway. And today it's the northernmost medieval cathedral in the world and the second largest in Scandinavia. Now quite a bit of Norway is included on this 10-day tour. Starting in Oslo, you'll visit the Folk Museum and um, as, as well as Vigeland Sculpture Park and the Viking Ship Museum. You'll ride the Flom Railway you'll visit the Hanseatic Wharf in Bergen. You'll cruise the Kyringer Fjord, drive the Golden Route and Trolls Path, and look back at history at Erik and Kisford. You'll also see the fantastic sculptures and hear the stories behind the Nidaros Cathedral in Trondheim. Now the pricing for this tour is $41.95 per person, which includes your airfare from Minneapolis St. Paul. But if you are wanting to fly from a different area here in the United States or in Canada, we can certainly accommodate that. So what you'll do is on your tour application form, just indicate where you want to fly from. And then Kim over in our airfare, airfare department will contact you with some options. So it's pretty easy to do. Now it's time to pack our bags once again. And this time we're going to set out on our Best of Norway tour. We have three departures of this tour this year. And it's also another good first time uh, to Norway tour, especially if you want to visit Stavanger. So the main cities included are Oslo, Lillehammer, Geiringer, Loen, Vos, Bergen, and of course Stavanger. We'll depart the U.S. again on day one and arrive in Oslo the next day. After collecting your luggage, you'll meet your guide and transfer to the Grand Hotel or the Phone Bristol Hotel, depending on which tour you are on. Now the rest of your day is free, 
and you'll meet your group at dinner that night for a little um, welcome and that way you can meet and greet everyone. After a good night's sleep, you'll start fresh on day three with a sightseeing tour of Oslo, including the Vigeland Sculpture Park, the Viking Ship Museum, and the Norwegian Folk Museum. And the rest of your day is, again, free to explore Norway's capital city independently. On day four, we'll depart Oslo and drive to the Olympic city of Lillehammer. Along the way, we'll stop at Hadeland Glassworks for a chance to do a bit of shopping, or you can enjoy a snack. We'll also start, stop at a farm for a tour before we're welcomed into the family home for dinner. And if we're lucky, we'll also have an impromptu performance of music and singing. So it's a lot of fun. We'll continue on to Lillehammer for a visit to the 1994 Winter Olympic site. Here you can ride the ski lift, meet some potential Olympians, and marvel at their feats of athleticism. Now, day five takes us through the Gubernstal and Oda Valleys to Loam. We'll stop in Loam for a chance to visit the State Church and the Falsheim Stone Center. The Stone Center is not only includes a stone museum, but it's also a jewelry gallery, which many people enjoy. But if shopping isn't really your thing, there's a great bakery in town where you can grab a snack. Now back on board the bus, we'll drive over the Grotley Mountains to Norway's Fjord Country. And if the weather is clear, we'll drive up the winding road to Dolphin Nebel Observation Point for a view of the Geiringer Fjord below. Afterward, we'll proceed to Lowen for dinner and overnight at the Alexandra Hotel. On day six, we'll begin the day with a troll cart excursion to the Brixville Glacier, which is one of the most accessible and best known arms of the Jostelbreen um, Glacier. That night, we'll continue on to Wolf, and we'll stop at Odd Hill Beacon's Weaving Workshop for a chance to do a bit of souvenir shopping and pick up a snack. We'll ferry across the Sonne Fjord and continue over the Vik, Mountain, the Vik Mountains to Wolf, where we'll have dinner and overnight at the Fleischer's Hotel. Now today, you'll definitely want to make sure you have your cameras ready because you're going to get to experience the full Norway in a nutshell adventure. So we'll start in Vols and we'll board the Oslo Bergen Railway to Myrdal. Here we'll change trains to the famous Flom Railway. We'll descend 2,800 feet within 13 miles to the fjord-side community of Flom. After some time in Flom, we'll board the ferry for a cruise on the Ireland and Nere Fjord to Goodbongen. The Nere Fjord is the narrowest and it's the best known of the many arms of the Sogne Fjord. It has steep mountain sides, hanging valleys, towering peaks, snow fields, waterfalls, and small hamlets, and it's probably the most outstanding natural attraction in Norway. It's about 20 kilometers long and is 250 meters across at its narrowest and a mere 12 meters deep at its shallowest. The surrounding mountains reach height of 6 1,660 meters, and the fjord is one of the multiple highlights on several of our tours. Now, UNESCO has included the Nere Fjord and the Geiringer Fjord in its famous World Heritage List. The fjords have also been awarded first place in the prestigious list of the National Geographic Traveler magazine. So it's definitely a highlight you don't So after arriving in Gudvangen, we'll get back on board the bus and drive the thrilling Salheim Road with 13 hairpin bins. We'll return to both for dinner and overnight once again at the hotel. Now day eight takes us from Vols to Bergen. And upon arrival, we'll enjoy a sightseeing tour of Trollhagen, which was the home of Norway's famous composer, Edvard Grieg. You'll learn more about his family and music as you tour his home of 22 years. Next, you'll walk through the historic Hanseatic Wharf and hear stories of the people that used to live and work in the wooden building lining the streets. Your afternoon is free to shop, Sample the wares at the fish market, or ride the funicular to the top of Mount Florian for a view of Bergen. The following day, we'll travel the coastal route to Stavanger. And in Valsnes, we'll stop for a tour of the Nordvegan History Center. Now, Valsnes was the home of the first Viking kings of Norway, and it was here back in 2011 that I got to see the Viking ship. Um, that sailed to America. It was actually being constructed 
um, in, in a moth nest. So it was very neat to be able to see that while it was being worked on. And you may have heard about the Viking ship last year. Um, it ran into some trouble when it tried to um, sail into the Great Lakes. So um, it was kind of disappointing, I think, for some people. We'll continue on to Stavanger via the underwater tunnels. And on our last day in Norway, we'll enjoy a sightseeing tour of this charming 18th century city. Then it's time to say goodbye as we pack up and head to the airport for the flight back home. Now some of the experiences you can expect on this tour include a tour of the Folk Museum in Oslo, a farm tour and dinner, a visit to Hoddle and Glassworks, we'll tour the Stone Museum in Lom, we'll get the full Norway in a nutshell experience, you'll also get to visit the Nordvegan History Center, and finally explore Stavanger both with your guide and on your own. Now this tour is very similar to Spectacular Norway. It's $42.95, also includes air from Minneapolis. And if you're a single person traveling alone, um, we can have a single room reserved for you for an additional $495. Now one of our new tours for 2016 was uh, Norway's Family Adventure. <coughs> We designed this tour with families in mind that you'll find a lot of family-friendly activities, which is sure to please just about everybody. And we're offering this tour again in 2017, but this time with a few changes. Starting in Oslo, you'll meet your tour director, Kari, and her family of three children as they show you their homeland. So you'll get to travel not only with a Norwegian guide, but also her three children, as well as her husband. So he'll be along too to help to help out. So with a focus on kid-friendly activities, this, sure, this tour is sure to be one that the whole family can enjoy. So there's Kari and her three kids, as well as her husband there. So Kari will meet you in Oslo and escort you to the Scandic Victoria Hotel. And it's what's really unique about this tour is that not only will you get the insight from you know Kari as as a Norwegian, but you also get the insight from her children as well, and so they can really interact um, with the children from here in the United States and Canada to provide a unique perspective. So once you arrive in Oslo, the rest of your day is free, and then the following day we'll have a tour of Eagle and Sculpture Park, and we'll visit the Holman Colon Ski Jump. And the rest of your day is once again free to explore with your own family. And the next morning, we'll depart Oslo and drive to Flo for a visit to the bear park. Here you'll learn more about the wild bears that used to live in this region of Norway. You can also feed the animals, see them in their natural environment, and burn some energy on the playland, or you can go for a walk. Tonight, we'll stay at the Storfjell Hotel and Resort. And again, this is also filled with family-friendly activities. It's ideally situated for those that enjoy outdoor activities such as hiking and walking. Or if that isn't your idea of a good time, you can check out their putt-putt course, their swimming pool, and arcade. On July 4th, we'll celebrate with a trip back to the farm. So we'll go to Launderdog Nature's Park, and it's home to around 300 animals from 20 different species. It offers children across Norway a chance to experience farm life during a week-long summer experience. Now, we won't be there quite that long, but you can cuddle with the farm animals and learn about the other animals in the park, such as lynx, wolves, arctic foxes, yak, moose, and reindeer. On day six, we'll depart Gull, and we'll drive through Hemsedal for a tour of Oregon State Church. Built around 1180, it's dedicated to the Apostle Andrew. The church is exceptionally well-preserved and is one of the most distinctive state churches in Norway. Some of the finest features are lavishly carved portals and the roof carvings of dragon heads. We'll then drive the snow road to Stegestein for a chance to float above the fjord and village below. The platform, which juts out from the mountain over 2,000 feet above the fjord, is made from laminated wood and steel. You'll then travel down the mountainside of Flum, located at the end of the Ireland Fjord, which is kind of over that way, for an overnight at the Fretlein Hotel. Now, on day seven, we'll start with a walking tour of the quaint fjord community of Flum. 
before we board our ferry for a cruise to Underdahl. So we'll get to actually sail the Ireland Fjord. We'll get to see it from the water and from way up high. So we'll sail to Underdahl, which is the home of Norway's smallest state church, 80 people and nearly 500 goats. Underdahl is known for its brown goat cheese, and we'll learn more about the tradition of cheese making and farming in the mountains from our local guide. Afterward, we'll sample a bit and enjoy a dinner before returning to Flom. On day eight, we'll begin with a train ride on the Flom Railway to Vos, where we will switch gears and join a family rafting adventure. Now, this three-hour journey will take us along the Vosa River to the Avanger Lake, where we'll enjoy some well-deserved refreshments. We're overnight in Vos at at the Fleischer's Hotel, where we'll also enjoy dinner. And then the next day, we'll continue on to Bergen for a city tour. We'll learn more about the Hanseatic Wharf and then ride the funicular for a grand view of Bergen from up high. The highlights of this tour include a family rafting trip, as well as a day at the Nature Park and Bear Park. You'll also enjoy a ride on the Flum Railway, a fjord cruise, and sightseeing in Oslo and Bergen. So if you have family members or children you'd like to introduce to Norway, this is a great tour for you and your family. Tour pricing starts at $43.95 per person, and that also includes airfare from Minneapolis. Um, we do have some um, discounts for children ages 5 to 11 and 2 to 4. So if it's something that you're interested in, I would recommend giving our, our office a call. Now the last tour that I'm really going to go into detail with is our Norway Scenic and Historic Tour. Uh, if I continued on the rest of the way that I have been, we'll be here all day. So uh, the rest of the tours, I'll probably just kind of skim through the unique aspects. So, but we'll get started with Norway Scenic and Historic. It's probably our most comprehensive tour of Norway. And it's also become one of our most popular tours in the past couple of years, thanks to a little movie known as Frozen. And the reason for this increase in popularity is a visit to Roros, which was the inspiration behind the movie's setting. So we'll spend two nights in Oslo and enjoy a city tour before we head north to Lillehammer. Along the way, we'll stop at Eidsvoll, for where the Norwegian constitution was signed back in 1814. In Hamar, we'll stop for a glass uh, for a visit to the glass cathedral, which was constructed to preserve cathedral ruins from 1152. And then from Hamar, it's a short drive to Lillehammer, where we'll spend the night. In day five, we'll begin with a visit to the Olympic sites in Lillehammer before we enjoy lunch at a farm in the Gubernstal Valley. Next, we'll visit the Ringabu Church and route to Rodos. We'll learn about the copper mining town on a sightseeing tour the next day. It is one of two towns in Norway that were designated mining towns, along with the silver town of Kongsberg. Rodos has about 80 wooden houses, most of them standing around courtyards that are still in use today. And if anybody gets a chance to visit during the wintertime, it is quite magical in Rodos. They have horse-drawn sleighs, and it's just it's very picturesque. In Grand Brigade, we'll learn about the immigration from Norway to America, as the museum contains Norway's largest collection of photos from the Norwegian settlement and functioning in America. Now, the gold rush to Klondike in Yukon, Canada, and Nome in Alaska is central to the exhibition, since the farm is funded by gold money from Alaska. We'll continue on to Selbu for dinner and overnight. The next day, we'll travel to Trondheim. En route, we'll visit Stiklestad, which was the site of the famous Battle of 1030. Now, this battle is one of the most famous battles in the history of Norway and was the battle in which King Olaf II of Norway was killed. Today, the Stiklestad church sits on the site of the battle. And during the battle, St. Olaf received three severe wounds, one in the knee, one in the neck, and the final mortal wound through the heart. He died leaning against a large stone, which um, is now, supposedly the stone is in the exact spot um, where the altar is now in, in the church. So 
the paintings inside the church are really unique. Um, they're don't, done in the same way um, of uh, Mona Lisa. So you might feel like the eyes are watching you of the people in the paintings, and that's because that's the way the artist uh, painted them. Then we'll continue on to Trondheim for dinner and overnight. After a sightseeing tour, which includes a visit to the Nidros Cathedral, you're free to explore the city on your own, or you can enjoy the St. Olaf Festival, which is one of Norway's largest church and cultural festivals. The program um, offers a wide range of concerts, historical markets, activities for children, and services. So it's kind of a unique aspect of this tour that we'll get to be in Trondheim while this is taking place. On day nine, we'll begin our journey south, first driving along the Atlantic Ocean Road to Molda. From Molda, we'll travel the Trolls Path, visit Brixdal Glacier, and drive the Lairdal Tunnel to Flum. We'll cruise the Ireland and Narrae Fjords and ride the Flum Railway as we travel to Bergen. We'll spend our last two nights in Norway in Bergen, but before you leave, we'll enjoy a sightseeing tour of the Hanseatic Wharf and Trollhagen. Now, this is a great educational tour, but you'll also find a variety of Norway scenery, um, such as visiting Rodos and also attending the St. Olaf Festival in Trondheim that makes this tour really unique. Now, this is one of our more expensive tours because it is 14 days. Uh, it starts at $52.95 per person with airfare from Minneapolis. So I'm just going to kind of skim over just the highlights of these next couple of tours. Uh, first off is Norway Southern Pleasure. And this is one of our classic tours that we're bringing back for 2017. And this is a great tour for those that have, may have been to Norway before or those with ancestral roots in the Telemark or Hardanger regions. So this is an 11-day tour, and we'll spend quite a bit of time in southern Norway um, in the Hardanger and Telemark areas of Norway. So after two nights in Oslo, we'll depart for Telemark. And this area is uh, rich in cultural traditions, and it's home to many writers and artists. Our first stop is Hedalstave Church. The church was built in 1200 and is a masterwork of wood. It's the largest of the 28 state churches in Norway today and it's still in use. Now in Rukon, we'll visit the Vimwark Power Station, which was at the center of one of the most important acts of sabotage committed during the Second World War, when Norwegian saboteurs prevented the Germans from developing a nuclear bomb from the heavy water that was produced there. And I just want you to take a look. So this is Rukon. As you can see, there's um, it's shaded by mountains on either side. So this will play an important part um, later in some of the um, uh, activities that we include on this tour, and as well as Splendor of Norway. A visit to the capital of southern Norway is our next stop on the tour. Now, Christian Sun has long been a favorite summer holiday spot for Norwegians. The sea and the surrounding fjords, fjords are great for recreational activities such as fishing and sailing. On our way to Stavanger, we'll savor a traditional meal and a former cheese dairy. You'll also find Norwegian-produced and handmade candles along with local art and interior goods inside. As we continue to the Hardanger region, we'll pay a visit to a rose mulling artist and learn about her craft before we settle into the Olenslong Hotel for two nights. As we depart Hardanger and travel to Bergen, we'll cross the Hardanger Bridge, which was completed in tw uh, 2013. The main span is one of the longest suspension bridge spans in the world, and it's also the longest tunnel-to-tunnel -tunnel suspension bridges in the world. So some of the highlights of this tour include sightseeing in Oslo, Stavanger, and Bergen. We'll visit Hedal Safe Church and the Norwegian Industrial Museum in Denmark. We'll spend four nights at Fjordside Hotels. We'll have a day excursion in the Hardanger region. We'll have dinner and a form of cheese dairy. And of course, you'll get to experience in Norway in a nutshell. 
Tour pricing for this tour is $46.95 per person, and it begins in Oslo and ends in Bergen. Now, Norway is definitely known for its dramatic fjords, and many people that have traveled with us enjoy seeing the old farm buildings and learning more about how their ancestors may have lived while working on the farm. Thus, we created Fjords and Farms. This tour begins in Bergen, and you'll learn more about past and present life on the farm as you travel to Norway's fjord country from Bergen to Oslo. Now, once we leave Bergen, we'll, in, um, we'll depart for Loftus, and en route, we'll visit Steinsbosen Farm, which has been in the same family for eight generations. We'll also learn about fish farming at, in Norway at the Hardanger uh, Aksa Center. We'll learn about the salmon life cycle from hatchery to serve delicacy. And we'll enjoy a day in the Hardanger region exploring Kaesen Mountain Farm, which is located high above the fjord, about 1,900 feet above sea level. Nowadays, of course, it's just a comfortable car ride through a tunnel, but until 1974, there were no roads to the farm. And by our standards, it's an impossibly difficult walk up to the farm. Now, many generations, they've carried all they need up on their backs. It took 30 years to build one of the houses, as all the materials had to be carried up plank by plank. The heaviest load carried up to the farm is said to be nearly a 200-pound grindstone. A motorized cableway was built in the 1930s, making the transport of goods a much easier task. We'll also visit Boring Folsten and the Hardanger Fjord Nature Center in Eidfjord. Other highlights of this tour include a fjord cruise, a trip to Stegasheim viewpoint, a ride on the Flom Railway, a visit to Underdahl, and a tour of the Borgen State Church. We'll also tour a grain farm and enjoy a farm dinner. So some of the many highlights of this tour include a look in the past and present life on the farm. We'll have a farm dinner with the Norwegian family. We'll visit the Valders Folk Museum and the Norwegian Folk Museum in Oslo. And we'll have three nights in Fjordside Hotels. Now the price for this tour is $43.95 and also includes air again once, um, once again from Minneapolis St. Paul. Now our last tour that I wanted to talk about today is Splendor of Norway. It's our shortest tour at nine days and is ideal for those wanting to get a sample of Norway before exploring heritage sites independently or combining their tour with a cruise or an extension to Sweden or Denmark. So starting in Bergen, we'll travel to Wolf, where we'll board the uh, railway to Flum. After arriving in Flum, we'll cruise the Song Fjord to Bala Strand for an overnight at the Kvignes Hotel. Now dinner at the hotel is quite a treat, so be ready to enjoy a great meal, and if you're brave enough, you might want to try the stinky cheese. The next day, we'll ferry back across the fjord and continue on to the Hopperstad State Church. The Hopperstad was built in 1130 and is together with Ernest, the oldest state churches in existence. Near Rukon, we'll visit the Hardanger Vida National Park, which is Norway's na largest national park. It's home to one of the largest wild reindeer herds in the world, and the interactive exhibits give you a chance to follow Bella. So what they did is they strapped the camera to Bella. You can see, it's kind of hard to make out, but this is the underside of her neck here in this picture, and so the camera is hanging around her neck. And you can follow her movements and behaviors throughout the year. Now after you visit the park, we'll take a ride on the Kofobannon, the first cable car to be built in Northern Europe. Now this was built in 1928, and it was a gift from the North Hydro so that the townspeople could get up to see the sun during the winter. So during the winter, because the sun never climbs over the mountains surrounding Yukon, the valley never gets any sunshine. So that's why they have the cable cars. And then now they have the sun mirror. So, so that's kind of a, a neat aspect of um, Rukon is that you get to see the sun mirrors. Other activities on this tour include a visit to a silversmith shop, a ride on the Flum Railway, a photo stop at Hadal State Church, and a cruise on the Sunday Fjord. 
Now, just to recap some of the highlights, um, we're going to have an overnight at the Convictions Hotel in Boston and at Lulun Fong Hotel in Lopus. We're going to tour the Hopperstaff Bay Church as well as the Hardanga Veda National Park. And we do allow some free time in Bergen and Oslo so that you can do a little sightseeing on your own. Now, this is our least expensive tour at $38.95, again with air from Minneapolis St. Paul. <laughs> We do have some additional tour options that I didn't cover today, um, the first of which is Taste of Sweden and Norway, and this combines two countries into one tour. Captivating Scandinavia includes visits to Norway, Denmark, and Sweden. Grand Tour of Island. Iceland is just that, a complete around-the-road tour of Iceland. The Song Vos Baldur's Heritage Tour. If you have heritage in the Song, Vos, or Baldur's areas of Norway, this might be a tour that would be of interest to you as you get to travel with a genealogist. Now, Iceland Complete, it's a little bit shorter tour of Iceland, but it also covers the Ring Road. And then finally, we have Scandinavia in September, which includes a visit to Norway in addition to Stockholm. And we do offer independent tour extensions. So if you want to spend a little bit more time in Scandinavia, simply ask us to arrange a tour extension. Uh, we'll work with you to create a customized tour package to any of the Scandinavian countries, Russia, and beyond. And we did have some interest in the Norwegian Coastal Voyage, so I just want to touch on that just for a minute or two. Um, it's hailed as the world's most beautiful voyage, and you'll travel along the Norwegian coast from Bergen to Kirkenes. There are daily departures from Bergen to Kirkenes, and the full voyage cruises can range from 12 to 6 days. You can also do a port-to-port -port sailing if you only wish to travel up to a particular city along the coast. Uh, for instance, if you're in Bergen and you want to travel to Trondheim, you can certainly do that. There are 34 ports of call, some of which are only included on the north or southbound sailing. Hertogruten uses 12 ships of various sizes, which can carry 150 to 650 travelers. So these are these are smaller ships. These are not going to be your Princess Cruise Lines or Royal Caribbean where there's 3,000 people on board. Now, these are working ships, thus you won't find any casinos or theaters and the like on board. On Hertogruten, the nature is your entertainment. Now, Hertogruten does offer theme voyages throughout the year, such as World War II, uh, culinary expeditions, Vikings, and Northern Lights. There are over 60 shore excursions to choose from, such as whale watching, hiking, sea eagle safaris, snowmobiling, dog sledding, horseback riding, sightseeing tours, and more. There are four cabin classes on board, which includes the polar inside, the outside, uh, Arctic Superior, and of course the expedition suites. Now, I'd like to be able to say that these are the cruise prices and they'll never change and this is what they are, but that's not the way they do things. Um, so cruise prices are variable and can change depending upon your departure date. Because they do depart every day, um, there's 365 departures every day uh, throughout the year. And just to kind of give you a general idea, I listed um, the seven-day northbound voyage, which would start in Bergen and end in Kirkenes during the month of June to August, these are what the prices are, just to kind of give you an idea. Now, we do have a cruise um, with Hertz Britain that we're offering this year in conjunction with an escorted tour. So if you're interested in a coastal voyage but would prefer to travel with a group, um, we're currently offering this in conjunction with Felgerod and Norwegians Worldwide. So you'll have a 12-day cruise round trip from Bergen. So you'll go all the way up from Bergen to Kirkenes and then back down the coast. You'll have two nights in Bergen before the cruise and two nights in Oslo after the cruise. There'll be special lectures and events on board, and you'll also have the chance to experience the Norway in a nutshell. So if this is something that you might be interested in, I would recommend contacting our office for cabin availability and pricing. So we're going to move now into some questions that we received on the registration form. Um, first, I just want to cover some frequently asked questions. And then I will open it up for questions that you may have um, that maybe you didn't ask on the form. So first of all, uh, what clothing should I pack? So my answer always is bring clothing that you can wear. Uh, casual clothing is the norm for our escorted tours, and you'll want to be sure and bring good walking shoes. Uh, you may also want to bring a jacket and perhaps a raincoat. 
Other things you may want to pack include an umbrella or a poncho, snacks, medication, including over-the-counter medication like aspirin, uh, sunscreen, a small bay pack where you can store your sweaters, a water bottle, and some snacks. And do we have to change planes is another question that we often get asked. Now, all of our tours include um, economy airfare with, with Iceland Air from Minneapolis. You will have to change planes upon arrival in a Keflavik, but you only need about 30 to 45 minutes for the layover, making it's a quick and easy connection. Your tour director will meet you upon arrival uh, at the destination airport outside of customs. Now, additional cost. Um, we do include all of your breakfast and most of your dinners during the trip. Lunches, however, are usually left up to you. You just expect to spend about $5 to $15 for a lunch in Norway, depending on where you eat. However, most of our clients, um, if they eat a large breakfast and bring a snack and then eat a decent dinner, they find that they really don't need lunch very often. So other expenses are usually of a personal nature, such as laundry, um, drinks at dinner if you take a taxi anywhere, and gratuities for the driver and guide. I would recommend bringing a bag of snacks with you on a trip, um, such as trail mix, energy bars, chips, etc. You might also want to pack an empty water bottle. The tap water in Norway is perfectly safe to drink, and you can save about 2 to $3 a day on a bottle of water just by refilling it up each day before you leave the hotel. And then on the way home, you use the bag that you had your snacks in to store your souvenirs. Now, do people in Norway and Scandinavia speak English? Yes. And for myself, I, I speak very few words of Norwegian, and I can get along just fine there, so it's not a problem at all. And when is a good time to travel? We have somebody ask about traveling to Norway in September. And really, it's, you can travel at any time. Um, it just really is kind of a personal preference. Uh, if you prefer smaller crowds, uh, being outdoors, or traveling on a budget, then you may want to look at the spring or fall. If you enjoy winter activities, or if you want to see the northern lights, then of course you'll want to travel during the winter. But if you plan on traveling with a group and want to experience Scandinavia at its warmest, then you'll want to travel during June through August. But whatever the season, we're here to help you get your travel plan off the ground, so we can help you plan a trip at any time. Now, do I need a, a visa to visit Norway? Nope, you only need a passport. So if you do plan to extend your trip to Russia, you will need a visa, but we can help you obtain that before you travel. So here are some of the questions that were sent in on the registration form. Uh, how much walking is required? Now a typical day on an escorted tour will have two to three hours of walking, but it's really broken up throughout the day. So at some stops you may have a five minute walk, and then at others it may be 10 to 15. Now for those with mobility issues, you always have the choice of whether or not you want to take part in some activity. We also had a question about having three or four people in a hotel room. And this one gets kind of tricky because hotel rooms in Norway and Scandinavia are typically smaller than what we're used to here in the U.S. Um, and that's not something that we normally recommend. But if you're traveling with children, um, a triple room or a family room can certainly be requested. Now, if you have family members or places of interest that you wish to see that are not included on one of our escorted tours, but you're not quite ready to completely go it on your own, we can work with you to create basically a customized itinerary, which you can include a portion of one of our escorted tours and then set off on your own. So if you want something that's completely customized, we'll work with you to create a, travel tailor, um, a tailored travel plan based on your preferred travel style, family heritage areas, budget, and interest. Um, really, to get started, all we need is just for you to call us, and then we'll, we'll get some information and send you some suggestions and recommendations. Uh, how many people are on one escorted tour? So the number of people traveling together can vary, but often you can expect 30 or more on some of our more popular tours, such as um, Spectacular Norway and Best of Norway, and about 20 to 25 on some of our more out-of-the-way tours, such as Song Boss and Southern Pleasures. We do only operate one bus, though, so at the most you travel with 48 people on board, which sounds like a lot of people, but in reality, it's really not that bad. Now, if you have any food allergies or special dietary requests, we do have a place on the tour application form to note those. And we do notify the hotels and the restaurants ahead of time so that they can prepare meals uh, with your request in mind. For me, for instance, I'm allergic to peanuts, so I usually put on there no peanuts. 
Now, when is the best time to book? And the short answer is really sooner rather than later, and that's mostly because of airfare. The longer you wait, the chances of your airfare going up increases. So if you're interested in one of our escort tours, um, we are offering some early booking discounts, and you can save up to $200 per person. So I would definitely recommend taking advantage of that. So, and there's a list of our um, discounts and the tours that are available. So as you can see, we've got Norway's Family Adventure, Stewards and Farms of Norway, Captivating Scandinavia, and Splendor of Norway. And there's um, three different discount options that you can choose from. So at this time, I'll just leave that up. And if anybody has any questions, I can try and answer those online now. There is a little box down in the bottom left-hand corner where you can submit questions, comments, things such as that nature. Uh, the Oslo Pass. All right. Well, Michael, if you're traveling on your own, the Oslo Pass is a great way to um, get into some of the museums. Usually it, you can get a 24, 48, or 72 hour pass depending on how long you're going to be in Oslo. And it includes either free or discounted admission to a variety of museums and activities. Um, to be honest, the best place to probably pick that up is at a tourist information office in Oslo because even if you purchase it, purchase it ahead of time, you still have to go to the tourist information office to pick it up. So. Uh, so that's just what I would recommend. And we can send you information on that if that's something that um, you would be interested in. And Lynn, yes, we I will certainly send out a copy of this presentation after I've wrapped up here in just a few minutes. So that's not a problem. Uh, when there is free time, is there suggestions? Uh, yes. Um, well, some of the hotels may have a concierge, yes. But also your tour guide is probably your best option for um, recommendations on what to see and do. Um, a lot of our guides, of course, have been with us for many, many years, and they know the you know the reasons where well. They can kind of get a feel for what you might be interested in and make some recommendations based on that. So, your guide, of course, will meet you when you get off the plane in um, your arrival city. So it's a great time to ask then if you kind of want um, some ideas on what to do with your free time upon arrival or you know later on down the road so any other questions all right well I appreciate you guys um, oh okay uh, being very patient with me today I'm sorry about the coughing and the very hoarse voice uh, let's see if we were to rent a vehicle uh, okay, uh, Michael, you're asking about renting a car. Uh, basically, it's the same information that you need here in the U.S., um, driver's license, insurance, that sort of thing. And um, it is comparable to driving here in the U.S., but you have to remember that the cars and the roads in Norway and Scandinavia in general are smaller. Um, a lot of times, um, they're also manual shifts. So if you're like me and can't drive a stick, then you'll have to upgrade to an automatic, which is usually an additional charge. One thing, too, to watch out for is drop fees. So if you're picking up a car, say, in Oslo, and then dropping it off in Bergen, the car companies like to charge you what's called a drop fee, and that's basically the, the fee for you dropping it off at a different location than when you pick it up. Um, if a car rental is something that you're interested in, along with the Oslo Pass, um, please just give us a call. We can quote you a, a car for wherever you need. Um, car rental places in Norway can be a little tricky. They're not quite as open as what we're used to here in the U.S. Usually if you go to an airport, they're open 24-7. That's not the way in Norway. Um, on Sundays, for instance, they don't open until noon. So you get there at 8 o'clock in the morning, and you kind of have to wait around until for them to open. So something else to watch out for. But um, it's something that we can certainly help you with. That's not a problem. All right, if there's any other questions, now would be the time to send those in. Otherwise, I will thank you all for joining us today. And let's see, there's our contact information. If you'd like to give us a call and, and um, ask any questions or maybe you think of something later. There were some specific questions on the registration form that I probably didn't cover during the presentation. What I'll do is I will send you an email with answers to those questions uh, to give you a little bit further details. So it'll either be me or one of my colleagues. So 
So just um, just look out for that if you get out a que ask a question and I didn't answer it uh, today. And then I want to leave you looking out over the Haibanger Fjord, and you can see down there that Ulansong Hotel. So you're right there on the water. It's quite picturesque. But this would be probably in May or early June. So you have the um, the fruit blossom flowers, which are quite quite beautiful. So. Thank you all again. I appreciate you taking your time out of your day to join us, and we and I really hope that we can see you in Norway or Scandinavia later this year. Thanks so much.